Bright blessed days, dark sacred nights, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The color. Shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself,
Yeah, it's interesting because that song, think about this. That song, apart from faith, would lack a great deal of meaning. That song, sung in faith, means a great deal. And that song, sung almost as a whisper, created a holy quiet in this place. And it's a beautiful world, even in a world where great losses have been experienced and great wonders found. It is a beautiful world, and we are grateful to be a part of it. If you will, let's look at scripture on the back of the bulletin. We'll take a few minutes of preaching. It begins with the psalm at the bottom of the central line there. And as we often do, if you don't mind, let's read every other paragraph. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Then the Lord will create every dwelling of Mount Zion, and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a cloud, and there will be a tabernacle of the shade in the day of time, heat, and a place of refuge, and a shelter from the storm and rain. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. They were all with one accord and one place. The word of God for the people of God. Another little quick prayer. Oh God, help us find our place. In Jesus' name, amen. I dated this girl and she had a big white Cadillac convertible. We only went out a couple of times. Later on, I had a chance to go to New Orleans to be a part of one of the major balls. There are some very formal Balls and one of the big ones in New Orleans was Les Ecoyers. And so I had a chance to go with the president of the women's auxiliary of that particular group. Um, they asked me to go with her because her boyfriend was sick and they thought I was safe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was an insult, but it's okay. <laughs> because I got to go to Les Ecoyers, and you know, we were all in tuxes and all. And out on the dance floor, and this young lady that I had dated came up to me and said, and I quote, what are you doing here? And I called her by name and I said, every now and then they let the peasants mix with the aristocracy, <laughs> which I don't think Jesus would have liked much. <laughs> I remember a man of one color standing in the backyard of his house talking to a man of another and saying to him, remember your place. What I want to do this morning, if I may, in just a brief moment of preaching is to say, remember your place is God's intention for you, not as a matter of putting down, diminishing, or closing up, but as a matter of lifting up, exalting, and affirming you as a son or as a daughter of God. These scriptures are really important. When you talk about a hiding place, I think of Corey Ten Boom, I mentioned this in the post this last week, but it was not a place to hide for her own self. It was a place of refuge, as that other passage said to us, so that others who were in great danger or perhaps in great need, found some help, found a place, found a safe place. Sanctuaries are supposed to be safe places. As a child, I can remember that even the worst kind of criminal wouldn't dare come into a sanctuary and do harm of any kind. 
it took a lot of adapting to realize that people actually would transgress sacred territory and come into a sanctuary and do a bad or an evil thing. Each one of us are called to do a couple of things. And one of them is to find your own place. Interesting, because there are a lot of people that would like to place you. They would like to place you, for example, as a Christian person. And they would like for your Christian experience to be the same kind that they had. Doesn't work that way for most of us. Each of us in our own unique personality has to seek and find God, find our own place in the kingdom of God, to find our own particular role as a member of the kingdom of God in the world in which we live. And it doesn't happen automatically. It takes a little effort on our part. I was thinking about Jean during that Magnificent funeral, how can you say that? Richard's here today, bless you. And that song that she sang with such power and such dignity, and about Jesus was running behind her all the time. And if you and I need a want to find our place, then my suggestion is pretty plain, pretty simple. Just stop and turn around in spirit and open your arms to the one who stands waiting arms already open. Each of us need to find our place. Listen to me. Somebody else can't do it for you. Even if they want to, even if they try. But when the way is open, and when you have a will and a spirit to go there, you won't have to go far. Because he already stands, stands waiting for you, for me. And then the beauty of our life together is making a place for somebody else. I can remember a thousand stories. The little girl asked to leave a church because she was pregnant without being married. And this congregation saying, we'll make a place for you. Her grown children were in this church this day. An altar where a man who had made it very well known to a lot of people that he didn't believe in much of anything, and certainly in none of God, being baptized at this altar. People who were of a different color, of a different background, of a different lifestyle, who felt there was no place for them, found a place. And it's when somebody makes that room available makes that place for them, that it makes so very much difference. You want to know what's really big about a church? Let me tell you, hey, you're welcome. We're glad to see you. Thank you for coming. Now, let's get together. The most important thing, of course, is to be a place and I think we're talking about that. But a refuge from the storm, a kind of a quiet and creative spot in the inner city. Did an interview this last week. And one of the ladies said, does anyone come to Wells anymore? I said, one or two. Do you all still do things for the community? Yes. Then I said after, she asked several other questions, real sweetly, wonderful opportunity. Have you ever joined us here? No, but I need to. No, but I want to. You know what I want? I want Wells to be a place where the acceptance, forgiveness, and love of God in Christ is fully alive totally resurrected and present for every person that needs and wants that. We're not going to inflict it. We're not going to force you. We were talking this morning in Sunday school, and uh, a preacher I recently shared a little time with gave an altar call and an invitation, and nobody came. And so he just got down on the floor, prostrate on the sawdust, because he wanted somebody to come so badly. My first thought was to be judgmental about him, you know? 
idiot, you know. <laughs> My second thought was, this guy might be more religious than me. <laughs> the third one was, he really believes the invitation is important. He really does. And with regard to finding your place and making a place for somebody else, which is what you do, it's being a place that's gonna keep people coming. A place where we can sing a variety of songs, welcome a variety of people, offer a variety of religious kinds of experiences. And a little church, they can make a funeral. Jim's the week before, and Jean's the next week. A place where resurrection actually felt like it was real. A place where I saw people serving food and cleaning up tables and putting out flowers and doing everything they could do, not just to remember someone that was entrusted to our love and care, but to actually be the community of resurrection, to actually be a place, a safe place. I told you about mom, almost done. Mom had a lot of strong opinions about everything. And she said to me once, don't think I'm gonna like Kevin. And I thought to myself, uh-oh, she was 91 at that time. <laughs> and I said, well, why? She said, doesn't the sun shine all the time? Yes. Aren't the streets of gold? Yes. Don't they go barefoot? <laughs> I think so. She said, wouldn't that be the pitch? And, uh, and she said, but one time when you preached, I remember you said that Jesus said to that thief on the cross, today you'll dwell with me in paradise. And that word paradise means a garden spot. I said, yeah, that's right. She said, that'll be my place. Listen, this is yours, mine, whosoever's. I go to prepare a place for you. And I'll come again, and I'll be there with you in it. That's the word of God for life. You have a place in life. That's the word of God in death. You have a place. Somewhere. Somehow. Someday. May we not only find our place, but take it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, it's so near the bewitching hour of noon. But as we leave this place, help every single one of us to know that we can take our place out of the building and into the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you might make it so. Amen.